Hello, two more cheap microphones to look at today from Aliexpress. Uh, there's some good points, some bad points, and some that are just plain comedy value, absolute joke that you must see. So, look at this one first. I was looking for something for a casing to build another mic, but I, want, I wanted to use a, a really good capsule rather than the uh, Aliexpress capsules that uh, before now I've had bits of metal shavings and all sorts in. Uh, this is advertised as a U87. Now, a real U87 is manufactured by Newman and costs, well, if you're looking, you get it for about $3,200. It's kind of the standard studio condenser. So this looks fairly similar, except it hasn't got the multi-pattern switch on it. Uh, the uh, Newman mics have got uh, three pattern select and a base cut, which this hasn't got, but it's it's a nice solid metal casing. And it looks like a nice donor to um, make a reasonable mic out of. You know, put uh, circuit boards in it and uh, a decent capsule. And it's nice and solid. Just for comparison, that's my... MXL V87, which doesn't claim to be a U87 clone, but um, specification-wise, it sounds good, if not better. It's flatter frequency response, oh, less the pattern switching and stuff, for a fixed cardioid response. It's a flatter frequency response and lower background noise than the Newman ones. Um, these, if you search around, you can get them new for about $250. So that's a, a good reference mic. And you can see it's generally similar. Not exactly the same, but generally similar in appearance. Anyway, move the box out of the way and take this apart. I might as well drop an extra cable in there. Now it comes with a specification sheet that's Chinese on one, one side and English on the other. It says 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, plus or minus 3 dBs. A little frequency response graph. Warranty card though, there's no manufacturer's name so you wouldn't know where to send it off to anyway. Um, it has got a presumably quality control stamp on the other side. So anyway, as typical with this style of mic, the bottom one screws, this case body sleeve, with a little space ring on that, or decorative ring, the case body sleeve comes off and reveals the electronics. Now, this has got good points and bad points. They've used a really nice junction FET. It's a, I can't actually read it through the camera, but I think it's a K, I've forgotten the number now, I'll look it up. If I can just, let's see if I can read it. I can't get, it's too small, I can't get the light right to read it, but uh, when I looked at it before, it is, it is a nice high-end FET. It is a very appropriate one for a good condenser microphone. Uh, it's on a circuit board with no isolation to prevent leakage. No, not a clue what feed resistors are because they're also not too small to see easily. Um, oh, well, it doesn't matter about feed resistors because there's no high voltage feed. It's, 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 it is actually an electrode, not a condenser, of course, as is almost always the case with these cheap Chinese supposed studio condensers. They use electric capsules of some sort. Now, uh, the bad point is on the electronic side, they've got an LM3, uh, is it 383, I forgot what number it is now. It's a little dual op amp, 358 dual op amp. Which is known to be very pure, poor for audio. Now, any description should never be used in a high-end microphone. Uh, basically, the, the output stage on the things is unbiased class B. In fact, it uses Darlington in one stage, one half of the stage, the upper stage, um, which means that the, the driver stage has got to jump by near enough two volts to reverse the output swing each time. So they have horrendous crossover distortion and not anything you'd want in audio, which is a shame because there's a lot of other amps that could have been used in that exact same position that would have been infinitely more suitable and, and given good quality results. 
I mean, the rest of it is pretty typical, again, for a cheap mic. Multi-layer ceramic caps, which suffer from distortion problems and uh, micron microphony um, due to the piezoelectric effects in them. Which is a shame, again. But, I mean, for a few pounds or a few dollars, it's not bad. It's not terrible. It's not bad value for what it is. It just isn't what it claims to be, a uh, UU87 by any means. Um, uh, if I take the uh, windscreen off it, pop screen, at the top, I'll look at the capsule. There's two screws all that on. And again, it's all nicely made, metal to metal, all screwed together. It's a nice casing. Screwed over in there. So I'm trying to look past the camera. But remember, this is claims to be a studio condenser. Ta da! A little electret capsule with big spacer rings and a big shell around it to make it look like it's a large diaphragm capsule. I don't know if you can actually get the light through with that. No, you can't quite see in that one. But um, a large diaphragm capsule is a lot bigger and very, very solid and heavy. It's mostly brass. And that is just a little basic electric condenser. It is a cardio wing, you see for the vents in the back. It is directional, at least. But it's not a condenser mic. But nice casing. Good. I'll put that on one side for a minute. And I'll look at this other one. Now this was about the same price. Again, I only bought it because of the appearance. It looks like it'd be suitable casing. And I wasn't expecting this thing to be any good. I wasn't disappointed in that. Funnily enough, it has exactly the same specification sheet as the other one. Which is uh, a bit odd, since it's a totally different microphone. Uh, this is it's nice and heavy. It's got a supposedly tested label on it, whatever. It feels initially, until you look closer, quite reasonable. Then you start to realise that's not metal. The me wire mesh is a metal, but that's about the only metal exposed other than the connector pins on well, the connector in even the shell isn't metal it's just three pin block that's a push fit into the bottom tube of the case and then you come to the real comedy value so i'm just putting the screws down i mean to lose the uh, video The screws separately so I don't get things mixed up. That's why it's heavy. There's a big chunk of iron in there. It's slightly magnetic, the screw is magnetic. Just a big ballast weight screwed in it. And all the electronics are in the top half, which is a bit weird. Let's pull that off. There's four screws on it together, which it probably needs because it's a bit flimsy being just bits of plastic. And then, what we have next is nothing. No electronics at all. It has got an electric capsule in, which appears to be exactly the same thing. It's okay, okay it's a different colour. But, no, it's not exactly the same, the pins are different. So, But it's the same size. It's the same size capsule in a, another variant of an oversized mount as in that one. And nothing else. The wires just go straight through to the connector. 
It's got the ground on the black one and uh, to pin one, and the red one goes to pin two. Pin three is not even connected. It's not a balanced output. It's not compatible with any kind of standard XLR equipment. And if you put a 48 volt phantom supply on it, I would expect the capsule would blow up and die rather, well, I don't know about spectacularly, but terminally. Um, that comes with the infamous XLR to jack cable as the uh, BM 800s and W 700s and other things do. Which with those is a waste of space because they have electronics to make them work correctly on 48 volt phantom power. But as this doesn't have any electronics, it's basically a PC mic. If you ignore the connector, that's a phantom, uh, phantom uh, sorry, that's a capacitor. Sorry, start again. That's an electric capsule connected directly to a plug, which is what you need for a PC. That for, for a PC mic input, that's what actually what they're directly intended for. They just put a bias voltage on the middle contact, the sleeve contact on, sorry, the ring contact on the plug, audio on the end, or both are connected together if it's just two wires. And uh, it feeds the capsule directly and the capsule audio feeds straight back into the PC. No electronics involved outside of the PC or in the capsule. But uh, as a supposed studio condenser, and it's actually mentioned using phantom power with it, somewhere in the uh, little booklet, I think it is, it's, it's insane. Yeah, that is gonna die very rapidly if you put 48 volts on it. They normally run on one and a half to 10 volts. It certainly won't do it any good. So, uh, avoid those. I mean, it's not, unfortunately, it's not even got a case that's worth using. I mean, for the trivial amount it cost, uh, it's not worth it. We, well, it cost less than the postage, I would think. It, it was a special for a discount and free postage, which, if the people, if anyone else has found out what they're like, it doesn't surprise me. It does actually come with a a, uh, a little cradle mount and a desk stand for that, a little, little a tiny desk stand and some jack cables and a USB cable. And for, there's a USB A to USB C and another jack cable on there. And that's what is. Oh, that's a pair of earbuds. <laughs> So it's got a few other bits with it. Yeah. Oh, that's that. not even got a standard uh, screw adapter in there. It's just a collet. So it won't work with anything other than that size of stem. And it just clamps into it. Which is a shame. Because it is a, a reasonable cradle. You know, it is plastic. Oh, well. Um... But yeah, and I mean this this object, it's made to look like it's got loads and loads of features and facilities, uh, but, but it's basically all gimmick sound effects. Uh, it's got all the different uh, meters on it, which appear to be stereo for different things. It's battery powered internally and rechargeable. But basically, it's a kid's toy. Got a little kid that wants to play and plug it into a PC, then that's fine. But yeah, you know, a professional mixer. You might convince a ten-year-old it's a professional, but um, no professional did ever use it. And um, as far as the bar graphs and things, they all change when you turn any knob. No matter what you change, they just they all three move together. They just indicate as you turn it, turn one of the controls. They just scroll up down to indicate what range it's in. There's no stereo. There's no nothing. So, no. Again, definitely, and it's a kids' toy level thing. Which 
stay well away from anything to do with professional gear or 48 volt phantom power again. I mean, there's no XLRs or anything like that. It's purely jack sockets, so that itself can't it too easily be connected to a wrong, to something that damage it. But uh, now. Nah. In fact, I don't want this, I have no use for it whatsoever. Um, if anyone wants this for a kid, um, you know, if they've got any kids that want to play with something like this, it's certainly not to use for anything else. Um, I'll give it away to whoever comes up with the most amusing comment without saying anything that breaks your two rules. So anyway, that's that. Just to show you again the box on this one, so you know what to avoid. So the brand is Zeal Sound, or what to get if you want to make a good story. Brand is Zeal Sound, and it's a P300 podcast microphone sound card kit. And the other one, I don't say much on it, but they are advertised on AliExpress as a U87 professional condenser microphone and I mean, at the time I ordered them they were both stupidly cheap I mean they were cheaper than not the uh, BMA 800 type things and with free postage so uh, again for, for a donor for parts casings oops, it's a nicely made case and it's worth the money but there's nothing else in it that's worth using and the other one just is <laughs> well no it's uh, no more comments on that one anyway thanks for watching and i hope it's been of some interest